Uh, to give you some history back on Stagville, <clears throat> it was 33,000 acres, which is approximately 51 square miles. Um, so back then, if a slave was to try to escape, it would take him days, if not weeks, to get off of the plantation, to get off of 51 square miles. During their emancipation, almost 3,000 slaves were freed from the Cameron Plantation of Stadville. In their walk down the railroad track into a space of freedom, for the first time, black men and women and children placed their feet upon the freed land, which was called Bragtown. In some maps, it was spelled with one G, in others it was spelled with two. This land, along with so many other black communities, was built by freed slaves of Stagville. The descendants wanted a church, and the master who was at that time being in hand Cameron, he gave them the land, he gave them supplies. The only thing was you had to name the church after him. So that's where they get the name of Cameron Grove Baptist Church, okay? And it was there, and then in 1952, they moved the church from the plantation over to where it is now, Berwyn Avenue, where it still sits today. And when you come in through the vestibule, the first part, if you look up in part of the church, you will see where they bought some of the wood from the old church to the church where it is now. About how the people of the community lean heavily on the songs that they sung, the spirituals that came off the plantations. Those songs helped them get through very difficult times. He said that those were root songs that keep the community together. Track, during the fast tracking, I'm sorry, of the urban renewal and the building of the East-West Expressway, which was the first name for 147, now it's 147, um, that went through Durham and straight through the heart of the black communities, many public housing units were built all around Tent City, which was supposed to be a temporary housing for displaced businesses um, after they destroyed a hay tie. What we ended up seeing was a lot of people moving into public housing. We've interviewed several individuals who come from the hay tie community. They actually moved into Oxford, Maryland. Um, we're building more information around that, but we see a common thread. We see that a lot of people um, find Bradtown to be a place to come after displacement from other communities. One of the, one of the things that, that, that is going on um, is the, the biggest part of gentrification, right? What people are doing now, they're coming in with these black neighborhoods where families or heirs haven't taken care of the property or what they're doing, buying the house at fifty or sixty thousand dollars, tearing it down, and then building a house of two, three hundred thousand dollars, which does what? It increases the property value of the area. And as they do that, increase the property value, then people that live there when their taxes go up, guess what? They can't afford it. You know, they're pushed out. That's one of the things that um, you know, is happening all over Durham, but still even in Bragtown. Not that we don't want to see development in Bradtown, but there has to be some places and spaces for people to live with affordable housing. Coming from a slave plantation to where we are now, it has not been easy, but we um, have taken everything that has come our way in stride. And I don't just speak for Bradtown, but I speak for every Black community that has been within Durham. So many have um, been displaced or lost communities now. But we're hoping that in the future that we can gain some of those communities back and hopefully have affordable housing where some of these people can be in these spaces in Durham.